Today I'm going to show you how to use Task Manager coupled with Resource Monitor to have a quick look kind of under the covers of how a Windows Server 2012 system is operating. So sometimes applications can be a little mysterious about what they're doing. And if we want to get to the bottom of things, uh, Task Manager and Resource Monitor can really be our friends. Let me show you. So if we right click on the taskbar and bring up Task Manager, this is the rather uh, simple view you get by default. If you run an app like Windows Server Dashboard, or Windows Server 2012 Essential specifically, it'll show up here as an app. Okay. If we click More Details, we get a whole lot more visibility into what's really going on. Okay, so let me just minimize Task Manager for a moment. So we've got a bunch of um, backups on this particular system. And here's some I want to just clean up. So we go in, and um, actually before I record this video, I, I went ahead and told it to delete a lot of those backups that are just uh, cluttering up space. I need the room. Well, for this particular task, it's running in something called Task Manager. So if we click on here and just start typing Task Scheduler, there it is. The Task Scheduler library is where these tasks are saved. So when you install Windows Server 2012 Essentials, it automatically makes this Windows Server folder with something called Cleanup that's run every week, um, Saturday, just before midnight, when it becomes Sunday. Well, you can always right-click and run it at any time, and I wanted that Cleanup task to run now. Because I'm about to back up some other machines, I want to free up the space. But all you get is this. It says the word running. It's been running actually for over an hour already. So what if I really want to get a grip on it? Is it crashed? Is it working? Is it doing anything? So here's what I do. Bring up Task Manager, you'll notice we've got a pretty good view of what's going on. Uh, if we sort by CPU, you can see this Windows Server Client Backup Service comes to the top. We can open up the file location. You can see the actual binary that's responsible for the CPU being busy is right there. Fine. What about Performance tab? So there's CPU. Now there's four CPUs going, only one shown. A memory is static, nothing changing. Ethernet is barely busy at all. Basically just servicing my remote control needs here. So it's really the disk that's busy. But we don't see disk here, unlike Windows 8, which shows disk on this screen. On Windows Server variants, you have to click Open Resource Monitor. That's fine because we're, uh, we can cut free from Task Manager now and go and open up Resource Monitor. Now let's make it large. We're in the Overview tab. We've got CPU showing. We've got disk showing. We already determined memory. There's nothing going on. It's just static. 37% use and it's not changing. So we can minimize that. But let's open up Network as well. And we've watched Network before and noticed it didn't seem to be doing much either. So let's close that down. Okay, so get this really nice view here where if we sort by writes is what it seems to be doing a lot of. Eh, reads as well. Either way, the heavy hitter is right here. There's the actual file it's writing on the hard drive. Right clicking does nothing. But we can browse our way there easy enough. So it's in that folder. And there's this giant global cluster file. It's in the middle of touching. Okay, so you can see it's busy. It's doing 31 meg per second of I.O. Uh, you can see the response time. So if we uh, resize things a bit, we should be able to fit all the columns in on one screen. There we go, without having to scroll left and right. So there's a look at disk I.O. on this summary tab, which shows all the C the um, resources, CPU, disk, network memory. What about uh, CPU? Well, not much. So again, uh, WSS backup.exe only using a very small sliver of the CPU resources on this server. Okay, so I think we've had a look at all those now at this point. 
and it's time to move on to the next tab. What does CPU tab get you that the other tab didn't? Well, even more detail. So, okay, we get processes, services listed. This is where the backup service is named. This is the actual executable. Um, handles. This reminds me of a uh, is a process explorer from sys internals or internals. And we got to select something at the top to get some value out of what I'm trying to look at at the bottom, I believe. Okay, so there's no associated handles with these things. Not sure. Let's move on. Um, not much to look at anyway with the CPUs. Uh, we've given four Z CPUs, and something to keep in mind would be a service CPU. That's, they used to be the red line or kernel mode, I believe, on the previous versions of uh, Task Manager. Um, but the overall CPU view is what you can see in Task Manager, and then this splits out and shows all four uh, virtual CPUs, in this particular case, the VM. So whether you're physical or virtual box, that's where you're going to see your compute core. So a core i7 that's hyper-threaded, you'll see eight things over here. Um, from CPU 0 to 7. Okay? And this one specifically is about device drivers, I believe. I call that kernel mode. Okay, let's move on to memory. Okay. Working set. Well, again, not much changing here and no faults. It's just not changing. Nothing to look at for memory. At the bottom, you get this nice summary tab, though, showing a nice bar graph. If you saw that moving around wildly, you know an app is uh, very busy reclaiming or freeing up memory. In this case, you can see I've given it a, a ridiculous 12 gig of RAM, and uh, it's barely using that at all. Well, it's using 4.5. So... Um, Disk, I've oversized it. I gave it way too much. Okay, disk should get interesting. You can right-click. Let's just try search online. Yeah, got that locked down. Okay, so you can Google around for it. Basically, it just Googles, or excuse me, it bings uh, the executable name. Not too useful, but um, here's a summary of how many bytes have been written. If we hover our mouse over these, we get help. There we go. So we don't have to memorize these counters, it just tells us in the last minute. Okay, so in the last minute we've done 25,000 bytes per second, uh, 25 million bytes per second average in the last minute. Um, this is the number that's more meaningful to me, 29 megabytes per second. Okay, so that's cruising right along, doing its thing. If we sort by bytes per second, again we get this ginormous file, global cluster that's getting actively written right now, and its response time is pretty crummy, half a second. Uh, that's a lot of milliseconds. Move my mouse, yep, that unit of measure is milliseconds, so sure, the performance of that particular disk subsystem is not great. It's a external RAID enclosure, 4-drive Mediasonic enclosure. It's a low-end RAID 5 controller, just ESATA attached. Um, Finally, drive F is the logical drive in this VM that we're talking about where the file lives. Remember this? Drive F is where that file lives. Okay, so that covers the basics of disk. Let's just finish up with network. Who is using the network? Service host, terminal services. Yes, I'm using remote control right now. Uh, you can see that if I preview peek right here. Remote desktop connection. So that's how we're connected to this virtual machine. And yes, you expect it to be sending some bytes over the wire. So that's a good look that uh, you can actually see what's responsible for sending out network traffic if you're ever um, confused or curious about that. As the other tabs had, there's also more sections here. Um, all the columns are shown by default, I believe. Yep. TCP connections. Uh, it's like netstat command. So you can go to a command prompt and type netstat and see what things are listening to or ports. But here you get it in a graphical format without having to remember any commands. Zero packet loss. 
and fairly low latency. If you got crazy high latency here, maybe you have a half duplex issue or something going on. All right, and then finally, listening ports. A nice list of listening ports. So apparently, uh, DNS is listening on port 1808. And... Um, Sorry, that's the process ID. Port ID makes a lot more sense. So there's all the port numbers that are um, listening right now. Gives you an idea of um, fair amounts going on there. It's sorted by port number, so port 80 web traffic browser. That makes sense. We expect this VM to have uh, be listening on those ports. Okay. Um, UDP uh, port 3389 is terminal services traffic right there. Expand that out, and you can see terminal services listening. UDP and TCP. Firewall status allowed. So there you have it, a deep dive. Um, you can actually see there's two network adapters so it's showing you each. Uh, and then it's up here showing you the actual activity, which is very much just trickling through. So that's it. Back to our overview tab. Anything else to show you? Well, there's a little overhead in this. So if you're not actively using it, you could stop monitoring, stop the counters. And auto fit comes to Windows. You can see it just helped with the formatting there a little bit. Okay. So that'll be all for this demonstration of Task Manager coupled with Resource Monitor to have a quick look under the hood at your Windows Server 2012 operating system to have some clue of what is really going on. Hopefully you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.